Honestly speaking, most of you guys today who are watching this video will not become data scientists. What did you say? Welcome back to another recall by Data IQ video. My name is Tina and I'm an ex meta data scientist. Okay, so I would say about the last five to 10 years, more and more people want to become data scientists, and it doesn't seem like the amount of interest is decreasing. So the good news is that the demand for data scientists also does not seem to be declining. So you may ask, why are most of you watching not going to be data scientists then? And just so you know, I'm not going to say that you won't become a data scientist because you're not doing it for a higher purpose than wanting to make a lot of money. No. I became a data scientist because I wanted to make a lot of money and I don't see why there's anything wrong with that. As long as you also like kind of like the work at least, it more has to do with specific traits about you as a person. So the first reason why you may not want to become a data scientist is that you're not someone that's able to self-study outside of school. I would say a lot of people have this problem. They get through school fine and then even maybe excel at school. Then you graduate, get a good job, and then never actually learn anything again for the rest of your life. So this may work for some jobs where work is relatively static over time, but definitely not for data science. I talk about the trinity of data science skills and you should check out this video over here for more details. But basically the very essence of data science is a combination of three domains coding, math, and product slash business sense. First of all, it's very unlikely that you have all three domains covered just from doing school. You usually have one, like if you did computer science, you have the coding part. If you did statistics, you have the math down. And if you did business slash finance, then you have the product slash business sense down. Now, if you're lucky, you may have two out of the three, but very, very rarely would you have all three. So what does that mean? Well, to even get into a data science job, you need to self-study the skills that you're not as strong at. Most data science jobs will test you with questions on all three domains. For me personally, my weakness was in product slash business sense. And by weakness, I mean I literally knew nothing about product and business. Coding was fine for me, although I did have to pick up SQL really quickly because I have a computer science master's degree. I also did have to review and learn a bit more math and stats, but luckily I do have a pharmacology undergraduate, which is the study of drugs. It's not important, but it's basically like a science degree. Um, I did some math and stats during that degree, but I pretty much forgot everything. It's always the math that goes the fastest for some reason. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree with that. So I have to study these skills that I either didn't know or forgot. Now on the job itself, you also have to keep self-learning. New tools and research come out super quickly in this field, and you're expected to be able to self-study and adapt. Again, if you're not able to self-study, you will fall behind quickly. And even on top of that, I'm sorry I keep saying like on top of things, but like Actually, even on top of that, data scientists are also expected to be very flexible on the job. So say if your team suddenly lost a data engineer or a product manager, well, you as the data scientist is often expected to step in for them because of your diverse skill set. This often involves the ability to self-study and learn things yourself to fill that missing role. In summary, basically, you gotta know how to self-study. So speaking of self-studying, Data IQ, the company behind this channel, is a great learning resource for all things artificial intelligence and data science in industry. Data IQ is leading the automation and systemization of data science and artificial intelligence pipelines. This is super valuable because it allows data scientists to focus more on the business context to uncover more opportunities and solve more problems. Data IQ automates things like data cleaning, visualization, machine learning, and data and ML ops. It also provides a single central solution for the design, deployment, and management of AI applications. So if you're interested in data science and slash or work at a company that is interested in better incorporating data science into workflows, you should definitely check out Data IQ by going over here. We're also linked in the description. Now back to the video. So the next trait that will make it very hard for you to be a data scientist is being a perfectionist. Data scientists are fundamentally scrappy people because we're expected to quickly let people know what they're supposed to do based on the data. People demand answers quickly. For example, when I was working at Meta, product managers and business people would be like, I need to present this thing to leadership in five hours. What should I tell them that the data says? Well, you get triggered and tell them that you can't just expect me to go do this analysis so quickly. But you know, in the end, you, you probably end up doing it anyway so they don't hate you. So you don't have time to do a nice model or a thorough analysis. So you gotta be scrappy and get answers to them quickly and accept that there will be a margin of error in your less than perfect model or analysis. Software engineers also like to demand quick answers, usually to figure out if they should ship a product or not based on the results of an A-B test. So you gotta go do the quick stats for them. People would also ask questions like, how does this new machine learning model you made impact this specific metric? A lot of things like that. The model I think for lots of data scientists is perfect is the enemy of done. 
especially for companies like Meta and big tech companies that move very, very quickly. Not being a perfectionist is a very important trait. Honestly, even for companies that may operate at a slower pace, you really can't go down that rabbit hole of trying out every single possibility and making the most perfect machine learning model possible, or else you could just get stuck forever and nothing ever gets done. So the next thing you have to be okay with as a data scientist is uncertainty. Here's one of the jokes about data scientists. Some of their favorite phrases are probably, maybe, perhaps, it is likely. Basically, I think this, but I cannot tell you for sure. And let me tell you, this drives the product and business people insane. They're just like, can you just tell me what I should do? But you don't because you don't want to tell them something. And then they come back to you later and be like, this is wrong. So it's always like a struggle over here. If you say something like from this data, it is likely this will happen and you should probably do these things. And it's because you genuinely cannot be certain what the data says. It is a likely hypothesis. Data science is not an exact science. For example, when you're doing a forecast of revenue, you have to accept that this is not going to be a perfect projection. And you also need to convey this to people so they don't come back to you asking, why is this projection off? Your machine learning model is not going to have perfect precision and recall. Your analysis is going to be off because you simply may not have the data you need and you need to estimate certain things. So if this gives you anxiety, I'm afraid data science is not for you. Okay, so with all of this being said, I want to end on a positive note. And I really mean this when I say that all these things I talked about today are not inherent traits that you simply cannot change about yourself. If you think it is worth it, you can learn to change your natural tendencies. This is what is called a growth mindset, where you can learn and grow and change yourself as opposed to having a fixed mindset, where you think that whatever you're born with is set in stone and you can't change yourself. It's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you have a fixed mindset and think you can't change, then you can't. If you have a growth mindset and think you can, then you can. It's up to you and whether you think it's worth it or not. All right, friends, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're interested in more data science, career, and AI content, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys in the next video.